but it's affecting the whole body. Um, a lot of martial artists in the old times, they were good martial artists, but they were also doctors in Korean medicine uh, who would practice martial arts and then during the day they would do healing on their people. In the old times, martial artists wouldn't make money from but they would make money on doing healing or adjusting the bones. Uh, in the Chinese arts, but also in Japanese arts, Jiu-Jitsu uh, practitioners were very good doctors. If they used to set bones and uh, do healing massages and uh, do uh, pressure points and uh, understanding the energy flow. Like Chi did the same thing, they were very good martial artists and at the same time they were doctors using acupuncture, needles and herbs and many, many different methods for healing. Interesting thing about the pressure points, the same point It's the same point. So if you understand and study pressure points, you will see that the body is there's lots and lots of those points all over the body. Uh, there is the major 300 the major pressure points and thousands of small ones. And um, to know all the thousand small ones, you really have to be a good at punctures to study. Uh, we'll have a chance today to experiment and feel different pressure points and see what they do. And uh, we'll talk about the healing properties and martial arts properties with damage to the body. Um, by the way, when you go to oriental medicine doctor, it's not just he's going to do acupuncture. Anybody can do the acupuncture. Have to look not at his knowledge, but at his personality and energy. Because acupuncturist has to be very good and pure person. Through his body flows energy, and when he puts a needle into your body, needle is like antennas. So if he has a negative day or negative energy, don't even go to the person. Doesn't matter how cheap he is. Okay, he will do more harm than good to you. Because most of the acupuncturists practice Qigong, it's a Chinese yoga. It's part of the actual oriental medicine training. Uh, the schools, for example, in Los Angeles, oriental medicine school, to become acupuncturists, you have to take courses in Qigong to restore your energy, learn how to breathe so the energy will flow through your body, but through your fingers will be flowing the energy into the pressure point. So if you one day you go to a regular medicine doctor, make sure that they're good people. That when you talk to them, you should feel good, positive vibration. If they're very negative or something pushing you against, then go to go to them. Yes. By putting the needle or doing pressure, they're actually able to harm you. The Aryan medicine has been around for thousands of years. So it's but we grew up in a Western country, and we're so believing in the Western medicine, which is great. It's made a huge progress. But if you think about it, it's only been around for two or three hundred years, no more. Only in the past hundred years, it made this huge scientific progress. A hundred years ago, it was still pretty good. But the Oriental medicine, over thousands of years, developed it into very, very sophisticated medicine. And it's interesting because if you go to a med medical doctor, mother and mother, and there are certain internal problems of disease that they cannot cure, you go to, and you have no other choice, and you start searching for other ways to get healed, you go to a medical medicine, and they can help. So it's uh, never underestimate the 
power arena is, especially with the pressure points of flow of energy. Every culture has some kind of form of work with energy. Uh, Chinese, it was Chigu and Tai Chi. Tai Chi, they, the Tai Chi, it's a card that you see people in the park as they move and breathe and beautiful. They, they use it as a martial art. But all those movements are Jigung exercises. And there is different ways to do Jigung. There is a medical Jigung, there is Taoist Jigung, there is Buddhist Jigung, there is a martial arts Jigung. Uh, Jigung is the art in itself. Sometimes they would call it the Chinese yoga. Been around for 5,000 years. And uh, there is one scholar, Chinese scholar, and he was writing the different techniques of Jigung. He discovers that each technique is connected to certain illness. So you can cure an illness by doing certain Chinese exercises. Exercise. And he was so prolific in his life, he wrote 88 volumes of books just in Jigung exercises. It's unbelievable, you know? 88 volumes of books just in medical Jigung. In the Western countries, we have only 10% of the books translated into English. So one day, if you want to learn more about Jigung, you have to learn Chinese. Because only about 10% are truly translated in the Western languages. Taoist uh, Jigung is an art of studying. A lot of Chinese masters want to live a long life. They don't want to be just healthy, they want to live alone, to be immortal. That was, uh, you know. So the Taoist Jigung rotates idea and the base and the belief that by doing Jigun you can live a very long life. Buddhist Jigun exercises based on the idea of focusing the mind. Medical Jigun is certain exercises for your health. Martial arts Jigun striking somebody with a certain chi power or in Japanese culture we call it qi will affect the body and you can do damage. I started doing it and Tai Chi, and uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. There's so many different exercises, and it actually does open up the energy in your body as well. Uh, Japanese culture had also uh, energy techniques, and uh, it's, uh, there's two schools that I had a chance to study with Reiki, uh, Japanese, which is fairly modern, it's been around a little bit more than 150 years old, and Jure, which is a little bit more modern. Uh, it's a spiritual art that opens up the energy channels so you can do it with your hands when you touch somebody. And if you do it uh, when you relax, people will feel heat coming from the hands. But the principle is the same, working with the energy. Uh, but today we're going to focus on more hands-on pressure points. But pressure points, we cannot talk about pressure points without really me giving you a little introduction about the energy flow in the body. Like I said, there is over 300 major pressure points in the body. Major ones. And there is a thousands of not major ones. It actually will get rid of the headache in the body. Okay? You apply it hard, some people are very sensitive, they're going to feel pain. Okay? But not all people. Some people who have been doing martial arts for a long time, the nervous system, system desynthesized. And it worked. I was working and a lot of people applying as hard as they can, they didn't even blink. It means they're so, the nervous system is so dead, you have to hit them over the head with the hand. <laughs> that means you have to use a serious pressure points to knock them out. Okay? So uh, later on, you'll get a partner to experiment. Actually, let's do it now, as I'm talking. If you find somebody comfortable working with, uh, grab a partner and apply, with your thumb pointing down, hold it gently and then apply a little bit harder and see and ask how the person feels. I'm applying it right in here. Oh, you're too nice, too gentle. Put the thumb down. 
<laughs> okay, but if you're applying a massage, a healing or striking the person, the thumb has to be like a weapon pointing downward. If the thumb is flat, it doesn't do anything. You're not checking the pulse, you're trying to hurt somebody. <laughs> and if you don't feel it, I will gladly show you. <laughs> All right. So some of you, I would say 80% of you, feel discomfort if you apply it hard. Some of you are not going to feel it. Nothing wrong with you. Don't worry. Uh, there is lots of pressure points in the hand. There is lots of pressure points in the full hand, on the body, and the neck, and we'll get to that. Uh, by the way, um, if you want to balance the energy in the body and you're tired, in the center of the hand, apply a pressure point, it, balance, it balances the heart. So this is a, get you a little bit more energy in balancing the heart. Okay. Uh, usually, same thing like Jiu Jitsu. I wouldn't even attack somebody attacking their fingers. When you're fighting, attacking the fingers is useless. The adrenaline is pumping so hard, or they're on drugs, you break the fingers, they're not even going to see it. Same thing with the pressure points. You apply pressure on the fingers, they, that's not going to affect them much. It's better go to the, to the body. Uh, but, like I said, <laughs> like foot massage, there's a lot of pressure points in the hand. And there's a pressure points in the ears as well. The pressure points in the ears, hands, and feet, the art is called reflexology. Very nice art, uh, art. If you ever take a course in reflexology, you're gonna love it, especially on your feet. And you'll be amazed if somebody massages your ears, how good it feels. Amazing. Okay? Uh, and there are some pressure points when you apply it in the ear, it hurts as well. All right, so we, we, we studied, we felt it this. Uh, there is pressure points that go straight down the hand and of course, if you attack somebody, you're not going to say, can I leave you, uh, pull your hand and apply a pressure point? You know, it's impossible. You're just going to grab it and do it. Uh, but then, again, it's not that effective. You're going to have to strike it. And in martial arts, this is called gingutsa. You can strike the pressure points. Uh, Hassan is not a good idea because you might hurt yourself. So this is a good technique to strike the pressure point, uh, but not the bones, only soft tissue striking the soft tissue. But uh, to feel the pressure point in the hand, you can start a little bit above the elbow, right in the center, and it's, you see how it, it reaches? Well, I have a good uke. <laughs> it's very sensitive, so it's a good to feel it. So it's a pressure point in here, it kind of shoots all the way in here, it shoots, right? You feel the kind of tingling sensation. But if you want to do a little healing, you start here for about 15 seconds, and slowly going, small intervals all the way to the wrist and then it feels actually good yeah it's funny it's between pleasure and pain you want to hurt somebody and then you make it feel some good yeah. strange pain <laughs> <laughs> so you turn the hand up there is three lines of pressure points they and they go there is they're here in the center and here the most sensitive is right, right in here. That's the most sensitive one. If you strike it very, very hard, his hand gets numb, almost paralyzed, okay? But if you're being nice and you do a little pressure point massage for 10, 15 seconds in here, actually it's gonna feel good. If it's interesting, for example, you do a pressure point in the feet or in the hand, and you only do one side, if you finish the whole thing, people are gonna feel that one side is lighter and the other one is heavy. They feel completely out of balance. And they're gonna beg you, please do the other side. So I feel much more healthy and balanced. All right, so, but from a martial art point of view, this one is important. You strike, see how it twitches and feels it? This is important. So if, if you don't wanna hurt him, after I press hard, I gently rub it to balance the energy and then pull it so it goes back. All right, but usually you don't really strike the hand. It's not that effective. Uh, there's much more important pressure points in here inside. 
And if you strike under the armpit, it does more damage. Okay. Uh, so let's now come to the to the shoulders and back. Hit it hard. You're gonna fall down. He'll be either unconscious or he'll be lying down without knowing where is the top or bottom. And sometimes he's gonna see darkness. It really gets his feet out of it. Gets him completely out of balance. So in ancient uh, uh, Rome and ancient wars, the, the wars were very, very brutal. You know, with the swords as they fight, cutting each other, <coughs> the wounds wouldn't be hard to stop because there was heavy wounds and light wounds. And if the doctors at ancient times would look at the person after the battlefield and they see they're dying, so they use a special humane technique to get rid of their suffering. The, the person would lie, you would bring a metal stick, take a hammer and hit it once and the person will die without suffering. So this point here is very, very important. Kill somebody. Yeah. Or if you do it gently, you will get rid of some of the head. Okay. Uh, we have, there are three pressure points in here. There are three pressure points in here, and there are three pressure points in here. If you apply very hard here, the person can go to sleep for about 10 seconds. It's, it's right in this area. Okay. So, around here. This is one in here, one in here, one in here. If people get in a car accident, they would have a whip flash. You do certain pressure points in the neck, it goes away. Okay. Um, the reason you go unconscious when somebody chokes you, you cutting the blood into the brain. You choke them in here, you're cutting the oxygen to the brain, okay. which is very serious. So if you choke somebody, the first thing you do, always look at them. Don't look somewhere else as you choke them, because sometimes you don't even know, and they're already passing out. Always keep an eye on your partner when you're doing your choking techniques, because when you choke somebody, the first thing, the eyes, most of the time will go up, and the body becomes very limp, cutting the blood and oxygen to the brain, and things will be dangerous. Every time you cut the oxygen or blood to the brain, there is a small amount of brain cells die, so if you're practicing your choking techniques, don't do it the whole class for one hour. Do it for five, ten minutes and stop <coughs> the class. Because brain cells don't get replaced. Okay? It's okay to do it for five, ten minutes, but not for a whole hour choking techniques. Something important to know. You don't want to lose brain cells. Here we have kidneys. The function of the kidneys is to filter the liquids through the body. You strike somebody with a kidney, if you do it correctly, the hand is cut. It creates a little vacuum in your strike, a little, uh, little. He will lose his kidney. But it has to be a hard strike to move the kidney. It's not a little strike. A medium force strike, and he'll be going to the best home for two weeks with the blood. And you can live on one kidney, but it's better to have two. <laughs> All right. And in Chinese medicine, the right kidney is more important than the left. The right one has to do with the energy flow. Um, liver. You can have to hit somebody hard. Hit somebody light in the liver and you're going down very, very quickly. Uh, and it doesn't take much force. That amount of force hitting the liver, and you're going to feel your whole body shuts down. You don't want to fight. You don't want to even raise your hands. It's very unpleasant feeling. Like your whole body just feels like crap. Uh, so if you want to experiment when you, as you're training, do a light strike into your liver. It's an amazing, amazing feeling. Uh, if you're defending yourself on the street, you don't even have to reach their face. Just a short strike to the liver, and they will lose their will to fight. They're done. Okay? What the boxers do, before they hit the face, they work in the body. 
So what they're really doing is they're shooting a couple of times in the solar plexus to get your difficulty breathing. So a couple of hard strikes in the solar plexus, and you cannot breathe, and then they follow up with the liver shot, and then they do a couple of shots in the face. Um, we have a lot of pressure points on the face. It's very, very pleasant. Well, let's experiment this. Before we do healing in each other, let's experiment this. Okay. So, put the two fingers in your partner, let them come closer to you. You'll be amazed how it feels. By breaking the nose, you're letting the, the, the eyes begin to watery and the filter creates some. So, this is a good technique. There is a reason your teacher is teaching and telling you to do this. The filter will shut down the nervous system. Then you break the whole jar, it just opens up. Ask any dentist, they'll tell you the same thing. <laughs> Interesting thing about pressure points. Why boxers? See, sometimes you see a big monster, you hit them hard, and he does just, ooh, I just woke up, I feel good. You know? <laughs> you hit them lightly here, they're done. Right in the center, you get a correct shot, they're gonna be completely unconscious. Doesn't matter how big and strong, they're just gonna boom, and it's complete knockout. So understanding those nerve centers helps you to defend yourself. So it's right in the center here, even if much more, short, sharp, shut, and it's done. In the old school of Jiu-Jitsu, before Judo was developed, when they were doing Osudagari, they would arch the leg and use a heel to kick and do Osudagari at the same time. <coughs> There's a pressure point here. When you hit it hard, you paralyze the leg. And then you deal with the guy. When Judas was start getting developed, they, they decided we don't need to paralyze the leg. We're going to point it to a forward, and then we're going to hook the leg, and then we're going to deal with the guy without damaging the leg. Go very hard on the inside of the thighs, they'll be swimming and jumping. But there is a trick. You don't go deep tissue. You go light. Uh, the light layer of skin, that's where it's most sensitive. When you go too deep, you're, they're not as, you feel as much. So the secret is you go with a light layer and you feel it. Okay? Great feeling. One day <laughs> you experiment, it's a great light layer reveal is only screaming like that. Yeah, especially if they're trying to choke you with a headlock, you reach and run. Uh, Alpha massage is an ancient form of restoration therapy and sometimes they would call it Seifu Kujitsu. It's the art of restoration therapy. Uh, in the old times, in the old times, Jiu-Jitsu, you study Kapo, Sapo. Kapo is a healing, Sapo is a healing. So you have to balance these two arts, healing and healing. Okay, um, okay, let's talk about other pressure points. The temple. You hit somebody hard in the temple, guess what? You can kill him. Kill the person. But you need to use a hammer uh, But you need to the three pressure points in here. Helps you to get into the headache. And uh, it's actually connected to the eye nerve in right here. Um, there are pressure points on the side of the nose. There are three pressure points in here. And the head has a lot of pressure points, uh, but mostly it's for healing purposes. But in the center, you hit it hard, the person will be more conscious of the Have a headache for this. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I don't have a head. Uh, someone pine sheet to get in the head? Yeah, you can get a head from a pine sheet. Yes. yes. Uh, okay. Because you know why? When somebody punches you, your brain sits in the liquid. So when somebody punches you hard, the brain shakes. That's why you're getting a headache. So usually the boxers, it's not recommended to go fighting in the boxing ring more than once every three months. Because you shake your brain too much. That's why you get a brain damage. That's why if the boxers have been very, for many years, fighting, let's go uh, uh, Look at, what's his name? Uh, Muhammad Ali. That's for shaking his brain all the time. The brain was shook all the time. If you're smart and smart training, you should be not fighting in the ring more for full contact, no more than once every three months to restore the brain. Because every time I get punched, it just sh it's shakes. Shaking your head with damage by No, 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 that's what they no, 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 no. It's from a shock, from a hard shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Look at me in the hyperextended, and it hurts, and it's gonna hurt for a couple of weeks. Or you do a throw, you grapple, and you put your foot in the wrong position, and this overstrains the ligament. Okay? You, the first thing to do to prevent the injury when it's hyperextend is do not tense up. If you get injured, if your joint gets injured, the first step is to relax. If you tense up, because, and we all will do it, if we're in pain, we, ah, and the whole body tense up. We're actually doing more harms are good. We have to relax. So if his hand has got injured, the instructors or somebody who is more experienced should come to the person and try to calm them down by telling them, focus on the breathing. Just take it, close your eyes, and just take breath in and out. And you just gently applying pressure point around the elbow, massaging it to release the tension. By gently applying pressure points, you will, the tissue that's locked will unlock and get relaxed. For him to also, as the breathing he relaxes, helps a lot. Usually, when he breathes for five minutes, focusing on his breathing, trying to relax, and you gently massage it. After five minutes, when he opens his eyes and he moves the hand, the pain will go away. 90% of all, all the injuries will be diverted if you take care of it in the first five minutes. 90% of all the injuries. Sometimes it seems like a serious injury, but in the first five minutes, if you will take care of it, you will, you will avoid the big injury. Because when the body is injured, if you tense up, you continue injuring it. The tissue is still tense. But if he relaxes and you massage and yet, in five minutes, when he opens his eyes and he can move the hand gently, if you can move it and he's he going to feel a light discomfort and pain, but not the shooting pain, he'll be okay. He'll walk away, next time he's going to come back, he'll be fine. After five minutes, you cannot raise the hand, that's a serious thing. Okay. Same thing with the knee. You injure the knee, you relax, you massage it, apply a pressure point. In ten minutes, he stands up and he's okay, he's great, no injury. In 10 minutes, he stands up and he cannot put weight on his leg, that's a serious, serious injury. So it's important to know this. The knee, and it's a very, very common uh, injury, is a knee injury, very, very common. It has to do with incorrectly throwing each other, incorrectly positioning the body, or falling on top of your partner, and the leg gets stuck in a weird position, and that's where the injury is. So, if it's a right knee, we're going clockwise direction. If it's a left knee, counterclockwise direction. There are six pressure points on the knee. Using your thumb, first pressure point. Well, let's, let's do it together so you can uh, feel it. So we're gonna do the right knee. That means we're going clockwise direction. We're going to start with the first pressure point is right below the knee, 45 degrees on the side. You want to hold it for 20 seconds. Okay, just hold it. And then you move to the point right below the knee cut and hold it for 20 seconds. 
And then you move to the point 45 degrees below the knee cup. And you want it's a constant pressure, you don't move your finger. 45 degrees above the knee cup. Right above the knee cup. And then 45 degrees and then 45, uh, above the knee cup. You do this about three rotations. But what you do first, you use your hands, you massage and creating a heat. Then you do about three rotations of pressure points. But when you apply a pressure point, it releases uh, a lot of energy and blocks and stops blood circulation. So and then you massage it again, create a heat. So the energy and blood evenly disturbs through the area. How long do you hold each pressure point? 20 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds on each pressure point. You do this. If you have stiff knees, old knee injuries, new in knee injuries, after one month, you're going to feel a completely different person. Uh, if it's big, big knee injury was before, okay, months and a half, two months, but you're going to have a completely different knee. Also, to check the health of your knees, your knee cap should be easily moving over the knee. If it's not moving, that means too, it's too stiff, you need to loosen up the tissue. The knee cap should be without a problem moving over the knee. Does it allow um, more flexibility in the knees too? Yes. If it's not moving, that means the ligaments, the muscles, the soul, it's too, too much calcium deposit. needs to be loose to be healthy. For, it, for knee to be healthy, it needs to be loose. Okay? So, but, it's, if, even if it's too stiff, it's not a problem. If you massage it, like I said, every day for a month, it will loosen up and all problems will go away. You're not going to have pain or less pain. You're not going to have stiffness. So after a month, the problem will go away. And I tested it myself. Uh, so it, it really, really works.